after our vivid debate on the relationship with, between globalization and the post-secularism and the, the possible understanding of this uh, extremely complex uh, phenomenon uh, uh, as we saw it uh, and different possibilities to interpret it, I would like to present um, in my short introduction a very uh, interesting uh, sociologist, uh, or more precisely sociologist uh, of religion, uh, Peter Berger, who is a representative, as I mentioned uh, during our meeting, of um, a group of scholars who are not afraid to change uh, the opinion and uh, even more they are convinced that uh, changing uh, opinions is the normal uh, destiny of a scholar even if uh, the opinion are very strongly present in the for decades in their life in the academic activities, and it was exactly the case um, of Berger, who, since his first uh, book um, uh, published in the uh, 60s, uh, The Social Construction of uh, Reality, uh, defended uh, a very strongly a thesis of uh, inevitable uh, secularization of. Um, uh, modern world. So modernity and secularization uh, was uh, uh, was seen uh, almost as synonyma, uh, exchangeable uh, notions. But few words uh, about uh, who he was. He was born uh, in Austria, in Europe, uh, in 1929, uh, and uh, uh, after uh, Second World War, he immigrated to America, to the United States, where he spent his entire life till 2017 uh, as a sociologist, as a director of uh, important uh, academic center uh, of research at Boston University, uh, he was the public intellectual, very well known, not only by uh, his uh, publications, but also his uh, presence um, in various debate uh, concerning also uh, secularization, also globalization, desecularization. Uh, each of his uh, books uh, were vividly discussed. They will mention only few of them. Uh, the first, uh, as I said, the social construction of the reality. Uh, with this book, he made his name, although he published it together with uh, uh, Thomas uh, Luhmann, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, but uh, after he, he published only also with others, but I will mention a few of his books which he may, he wrote alone. One who is very close to, to, to my understanding of religion and sociology of religion, namely uh, published in 1979, The Heretical Imperative. Uh, many of uh, Berger's books, by the way, were translated into Polish, but, he, but this uh, heretical imperative not. Uh, and this pity, because I think that uh, this book is very American in one, on the one hand, because it's showing how um, to be, uh, to think differently, to think, uh, so to say, in, in the terms of, of heresy, is, uh, is um, a very um, creative and contribute to, to better understanding of, of religious phenomena. Perhaps uh, in class we can discuss uh, more um, what I mean by this heretic, or, or what Berger more precisely uh, meant by this uh, heretical imperative. But to put the complex problem um, uh, brief in few words, it means that you are right 
to think as you think, uh, without uh, being preoccupied of the consequences what other people could think about your ideas. Uh, one of you uh, mentioned uh, last in last class the book uh, by uh, Samuel Huntington, The Clash of Civilization. And what is interesting that uh, Berger published with Huntington in 2002 uh, a book, Many Globalizations, in which uh, we see a kind of correction to uh, Huntington books, uh, book this clash of civilization, because they are many uh, paths, uh, many ways to 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 global uh, market, uh, as you some of you mentioned, is, is a global phenomenon, but also in in terms of religion, etc. So, I just mentioned it. Uh, I will spend a few minutes on one article which I consider extremely um, important, uh, published in um, 2012, Further uh, Thoughts on Religion and Modernity. This is only four pages and you will find it on, on the platform uh, and after I will say a few words because I think uh, when you read it carefully uh, it will give you an insight what it means to, to think creatively and to change your mind uh, when you get uh, more arguments which are modifying your way of thinking. And uh, the last uh, book which I would like to mention, it was also last published by, uh, by Berger, The Many Altars of Modernity, uh, published to 2014, so three years uh, before he passed away. And this is the book in which uh, Berger defend the idea of plurality, of pluralism. For him, it was a very dear idea, a kind of a new insight into um, modern uh, development of, of uh, religion, of sec secularization. And uh, if some of you would like to, to deepen uh, his or her knowledge and also perhaps uh, prepare a final paper or, or presentation, it will be a, a good, uh, good occasion. But as I said, a few words on on further thoughts on religion and modernity. Um, actually, in, in this um, essay, um, short, simple, and popular, uh, Berger repeat uh, certain th ideas uh, which he published previously, in, also in, in edited uh, by him a uh, volume with contribution of various scholars um, the secularization. It was the first uh, uh, declaration that secularization was uh, uh, or thesis of uh, that secularization is an inevitable um, result of modernity was uh, false, was falsified by, by evidences. And uh, here he repeated this, uh, this statement uh, that uh, proposition uh, modernity necessarily brings about a decline of religion has been empirically falsified. And this is very, uh, very interesting that he uh, speak about the idea which was dear to him for decades uh, that was empirically falsified. So it's not that he changed idea because of some illumination or, or sudden conver uh, conversion to the new understanding, but simply he uh, included in his uh, thinking about religion, the presence of religion in public sphere, uh, a new empirical data. Uh, and uh, this um, confession, so to say, um, is uh, not uh, that he complained or reject his previous uh, uh, way of thinking, 
but simply because he said many of us thought in this way. We, we were convinced that secularization is, is something inevitable and we have uh, plenty of uh, evidences of data which confirm our ideas. Uh, and now what happened that uh, uh, Berger and others uh, who follow him uh, change idea. He, he uh, mentioned a few elements. Uh, the change was caused by uh, contact with third world. So uh, secularization uh, theory was very Eurocentric. Uh, scholars used to treat uh, Europe or Western world civilization as a, as a kind of paradigm for entire world and suddenly he himself started to to travel to Africa to Latin America to Asia and he discovered that secularization is not uh, a term or notion which describe what is going on in this part of the world which is very important because Europe is a small part of the world uh, so third word second evangelical Pentecostalism and uh, this is uh, something actually we can wonder how come that someone who was living in the United States uh, was not aware of the phenomenon which uh, was born at the beginning of 20th century in the United States and was spreading uh, on the speed of very rapidly that uh, in the time when uh, Berger formulated his ideas, uh, so uh, 2010 or 11, already you can imagine, just guess, how many Pentecostals are in the world now? 600 millions. Uh, 600 million is, is a lot and uh, they are still growing and probably in 2050 they will be 1 billion. So the growing number of, of Pentecostals is, is something extremely interesting and, uh, and worth it to, to pay attention to. Uh, so some mm, short uh, comments to this. It doesn't mean that uh, they, uh, scholars who defended secularization, were um, wrong. Simply they treated uh, uh, Europe and, and uh, particularly Europe as, as a rule uh, and uh, that the other regions will earlier or late, late come to the same state uh, of affairs, but it was uh, not the case. It was uh, really, as I mentioned already, Western and then Central Europe uh, situation and not in other part of the world. And also um, that uh, scholars, uh, consciously or not, really were focused on intelligentsia, on secular intelligentsia. So when you ask students, of uh, American campuses or European campuses. Uh, the image which you get from analyzing this group, intelligentsia, academics, is not uh, entire population, right? So we have to include in our observation also other groups. And here he quoted an interesting book by um, uh, historian of science, Thomas Kuhn, The Structures of Scientific Revolution. And I think that this is um, a very, uh, very interesting book because uh, Kuhn uh, demonstrated how in science accumulation of new da data are falsifying the old, old paradigm. So the same happened actually in, in sociology of religion, which is also a science. So new data uh, change uh, the perspective.
So, and I will conclude with quotation of one of his phrase, a default secular discourse coexists with the plurality of religious discourses, both in society and consciousness. And from this statement, uh, Berger is proposing plurality as an alternative to secularization. And I hope that we will have in class a good discussion on this. Thank you for attention.